tech reviews back with another video and today we are going to continue the Motorola series in their cell phones with the Motorola Razr Plus 2023 or the Motorola Razr Ultra 40. Currently you can get this phone on Motorola's website as well as Amazon and any other places but I'll throw a link in the description to Motorola's website. The price on it is currently $699, a $300 cut from the original price of $1,000. But before we get started on reviewing and talking about this phone and how interesting it is, please like and subscribe uh, this channel. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, we have a lot of content that we have already released and we're going to continue to release content with more phones coming out. Uh, we're going to do about talk about earbuds and we're going to talk about all things technology. And if you have the Motorola Razr 2023 or any version of the Motorola Razr, uh, comment below and let me know if this is still a good viable option for you. I'm just going to provide my opinion on whether this is a good phone for you in this current day and if this is a phone for me. So the first thing we're going to do, let's talk about the history. So the first Motorola Razr came out in 2004 and it had the same kind of form factor, a little bit more thin it was razor sharp, <laughs> no pun intended. And it came in a multitude of colors. Uh, my favorite uh, back in the day uh, when it came out was red. And it was amazing as a phone. The technology was great. It wasn't as great as it is now, uh, 20 years later. But uh, we're going to continue to talk about what actually changed between, you know, then back in 2004 and now. So 15 years uh, later, Motorola decided to relaunch the Motorola Razr in its current hardware form and update a few things, uh, the battery life, update using the software of Android instead of their own uh, software platform. And it has been a great success. And a lot of people that I know personally have purchased it or have looked into buying a flip phone of the sort. And coincidentally, Back in 2020, Motorola had competition when it comes to flip phones. Samsung entered the market uh, with the Galaxy Z Flip uh, 1, and they released the first iteration of their flip phone alongside Motorola in February of 2020. So the competition was rising even in the, the space of flip phones, of all uh, types of phones. Uh, however, Samsung has continued to have their flip versions as well. So they have a fourth and fifth generation of the flip phone, and so does Motorola. So this particular version, which is the fourth generation, came out in June, uh, June 5th of 2023. And it has, you know, different nomenclatures. So this is the Razer Plus 2023 alongside uh, the Motorola Edge Plus 2023. So a lot of 2023s in their, in the years in their naming of their phone, but also you can find this phone as a Motorola Razr 40 Ultra because there is a slim down, kind of a budget friendly version of this phone, which is essentially a Motorola Razr 40. So this is the Ultra version of it. So it's taken a little bit of the naming convention from Samsung and Apple when it comes to having an ultra model. All right. So that was just a brief history of it. And I also purchased this phone on eBay for uh, under 500 bucks, which I suggest you do that if you want to try this out just to uh, see if you like it and see if this is a viable option for you. And let's just talk about some of the cool features that I enjoyed about this phone. Well, for starters, there's four different colors of the Motorola Razr, and this is the Glacier Blue. They have an infinite, infinite black, and then they have a Viva Magenta, which is essentially a magenta red pinkish uh, color. And then they have a Peach Fuzz, which is uh, a more pink orange more of a peach color, <laughs> color uh, phone and body. And speaking of body, let's talk about the entire body of this phone. So 
this weighs about 185 grams, uh, depending on, you know, whether it's open or closed, or it's about 6.5 ounces. So it's very light. And even, and even when you open it up, it's still light compared to the other chunky candy bar phones um, that's on the market currently. So the inside is plastic uh, right here. So it's a little bit soft, so you can actually touch it. But on the back side here, we got a uh, glass, the Gorilla Glass Victus uh, on both the back and the, uh, the external screen here. It has an aluminum frame and the hinge is made out of stainless steel. So I didn't really see anything about any water resistance uh, rating or anything on this phone. Uh, however, it does say that it is water repellent, it has a water repellent coating. So I wouldn't suggest you throw this in the ocean and figure out if it's IP water resistant or splash resistant. I wouldn't test it because the phone feels a little delicate, even though it's light, it still feels a little delicate. All right. So let's talk about the display. So we have a LTPO AMOLED and it has 165 hertz of refresh rate and unfolded. It's about 6.9 inches. So bigger than your average candy bar. Uh, phone and it displays 1400 nits of peak brightness. All right, so let's talk about the platform. So this came with Android 13 and it does have the capability to go to Android 14. Uh, currently, uh, this is running Android 13. So the update for uh, this for Android 14 for this phone has not come out. This is a Snapdragon uh, 8 generation one. So it doesn't have the latest processor. Well, but however, the new one may have the, gen the next generation um, processor in there, but we'll see. Okay, and then now let's talk about uh, memory. So it does not have any expandable memory. So this comes with a eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigs of uh, storage, not expandable storage, but storage. So pretty good. And it does have uh, the transfer speed UFS of 3.1, <clears throat> which makes it uh, very good and very snappy. And let's talk about uh, the camera. So let's see. We have a, a camera housing on the back here. So the screen is flush and it has everything kind of filled out except the parts around the camera. And the main camera is a 12 megapixel wide angle camera, and it has a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera. It shoots up to 4K uh, video, 30 frames, 60 frames per second. And it does have HDR10. Okay, let's talk about the selfie camera. So right here we have a 32 megapixel uh, selfie camera, which is pretty good, which is weird that it's just better than the external. And it has a up to four, 4K 30 to 60 frames uh, per second in video, 1080p 30 to 60 frames uh, video shooting. All right, and let's talk about the battery. So this has a 3,800 milliamp battery. It has wired charging speeds up to 30 watts. And it has uh, charging speeds up to five watts wirelessly. So, my comment on the battery life on this is that you can see it drain uh, the real time during the day and some might have anxiety coming from a Samsung S24 Ultra like myself and see it drain so quickly. However, it does have a pretty good wire charge and usually I can get a full day's work, full day's battery life with this phone. So uh, to each its own. And I think that was my issue when it comes to these flip phones, especially, especially the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip. I gave my wife the Z Flip phone and the battery life was horrible when it came out. And I'm not sure what they can do to make the battery life better, uh, which is going to be on like one of my cons. But I think an improved battery would have had me more excited to keep this phone than its current you know, iteration, this generation of it. So I expect in the future, they figure out some way to make the battery life a lot better, or make it with a bigger 
battery, but that's just what I believe, and that was my opinion. All right, so enough of the specs. Let's just talk about let's talk about the display. So when you first open this up and you turn it on and you get everything started, unfold it, you close it, and you have this wonderful display, and it has its its own kind of set of display notification options and uh, of the sort. This does have a fingerprint sensor, which is on the side right here. So I can get on the phone through the fingerprint sensor on the side. And it does have face on lock, you know, so it does work. As I look down, it opens right up. So it still has the same snappy performance it does on the uh, Motorola Edge Plus, as well as the Think Phone. So all of the software is kind of uh, the same standard. This does have a little bit of difference when it comes to notifications, but let's just talk about the external display. I think this is the, the feature on the phone that really I really enjoy. Holding the phone in the hand like this is very weird, but you get used to it because I've had this phone for you know over a week and I have no problem putting this in my pocket, pulling it out, doing a little glimpse of any kind of notifications. But when you first get started, it gives you these kind of preset options. So the first option would be this kind of like number pound dot uh, nine dots organization. And this is where you'll have your apps. Now, when you first get the phone, you're not you're going to have maybe four apps show up here. But uh, with this little uh, pencil, you can you can add as many apps as you want to. And then you can turn this display option right here into multiple apps that you pull up, you know, frequently, because if you don't, you would have to open the phone, close it, and then uh, agree to continue whatever you were doing when you had it open and unfold it, uh, which is, you know, kind of weird, but this is just a nice way to just kind of display your apps right here. So we go back to the home page. We have our contacts right here. So you can either pull up, add a contact. You can add a message contact. So we can go here and let's say I wanted to add my father here. So the contact shows up right here. And at any point I can either text him, which I set up as a text, or I can do a direct dial. So I can have them on here twice. So I have them for a, a call option and then a text message option, or I can just use the dial pad to go ahead and do my one handed dial which is really cool because I can do it one-handed and not be tired and I can search the contacts and I can find other people and I can hit the button. Oops. And it's already started. So I'm not going to have that work. So you can just dial directly from here, which is a really cool option. Okay. Next thing we have our calendar. So this has their own Android 14 version of the calendar. So anything on your, calendar shows up right here. Pretty cool. And then we have our weather. So this is the Motorola native weather app. And you can just click in there and then you can, you know, see kind of like a little glimpse of the weather. And then we have our gaming options. So there are some preset games that come on here uh, from this. This or it's called Toast Games, I believe. But they have some pretty cool options of games on here. And I, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I like to play this one just for fun. But it's cool to have like a one-handed game here. I haven't tried any of the uh, games that I play regularly. Except like Hearts, for instance. And this is probably like a drawback for me. It's very tiny where I can't really, you know, see everything. But there is an option where you could, you know, potentially play it. I can't see all my cards because the screen is really small. But if I open it up, you know, it's just back to square one, like a normal candy bar style phone. So pretty cool. And as you can see, I have an option down here to continue where I was at. And it disappears whenever it goes off. So as with most Motorola phones that I reviewed, or all of them. It does not have an always on display. So as you can see, it disappears. 
And as you see, as I open it up, uh, give it a second, it will disappear. Or if I just force it to close, there's no always on display, but it does have a tap to wake kind of function or moving around and something shows up, which is cool. And it saves a little bit on the battery, but you know, more battery, better, always, dis always on display is always a plus in my book. All right, so let's just talk about the displays that they do have. So this is pretty cool. So if I decided to, so I can change, I can personalize my wallpaper. So I can go to, I can manage my panels. So I can drag and arrange the panels I just showed you. And I didn't show you there's a Google News view. Let me go ahead and show you that. And you can have a glimpse of all your news. So anyways, let me go back to manage panels so I can go to I can add Spotify. And then I can add uh, Google Fit. So I can get a glimpse of my music. And my health, which is also pretty cool to have on this external display. All right, so let's talk about this little notification area so all of your notifications will show up here the battery life will show up here the camera options will show up here and i'll show you what a selfie looks like and so if you touch it down here it's your normal notifications show up here you can actually go into it um let's say for instance i want to go into this best buy it does pull up now there are some apps that you have to allow the external screen to pull up that information. So I had to allow the external screen to, you know, show my information here, uh, which is cool. Uh, let's say eBay. See, I haven't allowed eBay to open on the external uh, screen here, but I'm going to allow it. So that would be probably like a nuance, uh, a nuisance that you have to do that for every single app. But I'm sure there's a way you can do it for every single app, but you can, you know, kind of do there's no horizontal option. It's just all, you know, from display, from this perspective, which I have no problem with that because this is very cool. All right. So let's talk about personalization on the wallpapers. So you can choose a photo from yours. Or you can just do like a regular one. So pretty cool. And look at there, I can switch it up. And then you can, you know, choose a clock style. So I have a clock style with the Roman numerals, but you have multitude of options here. So I think that's just pretty cool. All right, so now that we've chosen our clock display right now, Let's talk about the external, let me show you the clock display I just had. There it is, pretty cool. All right, so let's talk about also what we, all, we, what we can do on this particular side. So we can open the phone with our fingerprint sensor and we can lock it, as you can see. And I can show my clock display. So if I wanted to get in my phone, I have to do that, which is my numeric password, or I can just use my fingerprint. Okay. And you gotta allow the apps that you haven't used. And then you can just swipe up using the gesture here. Swipe left, right, using gestures to use the external display. All right, so let's talk about camera. So when you use their patented, patented camera option with the turn of the wrist, you can access the camera. So this access a selfie camera. So you can see just kind of like the room and this is what it looks like whenever you're taking a picture. This is my room here, and these are the lights. And the way you take a picture, you can do it this way, or this way, or that way. Uh, the way you take a picture is you do the volume up, 
volume down, doesn't matter. And you can click on that option here and you can select which camera mode you want to be in. So you can be in video. You can be in, you can be in mirror mode. Just look at yourself in the mirror and then portrait, photo booth, what have you. And then just gesture out when you're done. You can also, you know, shoot up to 4K video on this, which is pretty cool from this perspective. You're videotaping yourself. And I appreciate that. All right, let's see what else we have on display. Let's look at what our apps will look like on this phone. So as you can see, this is Instagram and with Instagram, it works like normal. And I think this is kind of set up for an Instagram type size of video. So you can look at kind of like a truncated version of Instagram, which is pretty cool when you're looking at the external screen. No issues with that. OK, let's see what the Instagram, I mean, Twitter looks like. So if I open up X. Once again, I get like a truncated version of it and still works. Videos are extra smooth. I mean, the 165 hertz, the you know, refresh rate is really showing up here on this particular phone. And you can also see they're smart, smaller to make it easier for you to see. And then let's say I wanted to open it up. I can do that. And it goes exactly where it was. And then if I close it, I can continue where I was. And it actually continues where you left off when you opened it. Now, Samsung can do that with the foldable and the flip. However, the execution on the Motorola is much, much better. Like if I ever did that with Instagram on a Samsung or Twitter, Oh, it would totally lose my spot if I closed it up and try to use it from the outside, uh, which Samsung should get better at that because Motorola seems to have taken their time to make the hardware and the software work in your favor. And that would be a constant theme throughout this uh, presentation for the Razer. The Razer does the little things, the little things compared to Samsung, which does the macro, big battery, big everything. Uh, but this in my opinion, is the better of the flip phones versus <laughs> versions of any phone out there. I haven't China, tried any Chinese versions of the phones or any other ver iteration of a flip phone, but for the options for the United States, the Samsung and the Motorola, I choose Motorola. All right, so let's look at Facebook. Now look at Facebook. And as you can see, you can see your uh, reels and you can see kind of like a small version of your Facebook feed, which is pretty cool to take a little glance at it and be able to, you know, look at it. And then, you know, and that's what happens when you pull up a picture and you open it up. Oh, did it just lose my, my spot when I opened it up? Maybe it's just a Facebook thing. Let's try it. So I'm looking at shoes. Let's see what happens when I close it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Samsung. It must be just a Facebook thing. Got excited. Well, let's continue on the journey. All right. So let's look at what it sounds like from the external screen by looking at YouTube. So... I'm just going to go ahead and look at one of my videos. And this is what it looks like from the external screen. Turn it up a little bit. So it utilizes the speakers on the phone. And this is what it looks like. And guess what? When you open it up, but before we get started, it takes you right back there. We really do appreciate it and close it up. Comments and your support. It shows it shows a media player because 
The phone is uh, considered locked whenever you close it. But when you unlock it and you go back. Uh oh, when you go back, it does show the actual video. So that's another thing. Oh, and one thing I forgot, if you do have the apps, the apps that you have downloaded here, we'll be able to go back and, you know, look at your history screen. If it's not in this particular set of options, you will not have the opportunity, you know, you'll not be able to, you know, go to your recents and find it. So it has to be on that dock. It has to be selected by you. And if it's not, it won't show up. All right. And then there's the time, the clock, timer, speed watch, everything. I added the calendar here. I mean, calculator. So I can use the calculator function with one handed, which is awesome. And let's go to the settings. So if we look at the drop down here, we have our brightness. That's how bright it can go. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. So no option to rotate. There is a dark. Is there a dark mode? Yes, there is a dark mode. So let's go back to Facebook or oh, no, not Facebook. Let's go to Instagram. So it's in light mode. Hit that button. It's in dark mode. So this is essentially an extension of the 6.9 inch screen when you open it up. Pretty cool. See what other options we have. We have the flashlight. All right. So on the Motorola Razor, I mean, just this is a gorgeous phone. If you want to turn the flashlight on, you have to do a tomahawk chop. And it shows up. And to turn it off, same thing. Motorola thinks about the small things. I appreciate that. Okay. And then, as you can see, I hit the arrow to see my other options. So my Google News feed. I mean, this is just a miniature phone. It's just the battery I'm having issues with. This is a long lasting battery and the camera module was, you know, supreme. Uh, they would have my money. <laughs> All right. So that's pretty cool. Let's open up the phone now. So we're done with the external display. And I wanted to go into the lock screen. So you turn on the lock screen here and that shows up, which is kind of cool. And you can change this in your personalization. But one of the, the cool things is if you're, this thing alerts you when you have, it'll pull like a pulsing sensation when you have a notification you haven't looked at. And if you tap and hold, it will show kind of a preview of that notification. Same thing to every single app. And if you have multiple notifications and you can't see, it'll show all the way down right here. And then you can let go. Isn't that cool? All right, so let's open it up. So as I mentioned before, this is very light. This is very light. And if I do that little twisting motion, the camera turns on. And if I wanted to do a video It'll show a preview of the external to the person that I'm taking a picture of so they can get a view of the picture that I'm taking. How cool. And you can turn it off. Excuse me. All right. There you go. So long story short, when it comes to opening the phone, you don't feel or see the crease at all. This is a very cool little crease. I love the snapping motion that you can do with this. I don't advise doing this all the time, but it's very cool when you're showing somebody <laughs> that, hey, I do have a flip phone and I can just open it this way. And it shows up. Pretty cool for me. OK, as I mentioned before, and it has the Motorola app where you can do everything you want when it comes to personalization. I'll throw the link to uh, the ThinkPhone review because I did a full deep dive on that 
entire uh, personalization. And I would say the only thing that is different from the Motorola Edge Plus in the ThinkPhone is the RAM. So the RAM used here, it doesn't seem as fluid. It doesn't seem as snappy. I mean, it does have a 165 you know, hertz refresh rate and you can see it when it comes to, you know, downloading and uploading. But when you're using like multiple apps at the same time, there is some kind of lag, which is kind of understandable because this phone is so light and to put so much power in this phone, it would probably be a little bit more heavier like the Motorola Razor, I mean, the Motorola uh, Edge Plus. But, you know, you have to give up something in order to have, you know, you can't have it all, even though Samsung tries to all the time. Uh, this is the Motorola version of the Ultra version of their particular uh, phone lines. Now, I do say that Motorola does pay attention to the little details. I mean, the crease you can't really see. And this, the hardware is pretty cool. I mean, it does look and feel like a normal candy bar phone. It just has that additional display, <laughs> excuse me, display where you can just close it and do that what you want to do here. All right, so let's get into my settings. Obviously, we drop down, beautiful, fluid. And let's go to the settings, if I can get there. Oh, right here. <laughs> okay, so I have, you know, you can personalize. That's the Motorola menu here. And then the adapter brightness is on. The dark theme is on. You got nightlight, natural colors, auto-rotate. Cool, full screen contents. You're gonna have to do your best ones here. High refresh rate. Here's the high refresh rate, 165. And all the other options here. And then I just wanted to show you the version I have here. Check for an update. Android 13 still on here. So it still has Android 13. And All that cool stuff. Great. All right, so let's talk about the camera. So as I mentioned before, this has a 12 megapixel, you know, wide and a 13 megapixel ultra wide here. So not the best. So let's just look at the videos and photos that I've taken and see uh, what we can gather from what we have. Let's see. So, I took some photos. Let's see. Here we go. So, this is me walking outside, you know, from work. Take some really cool, decent photos. And you can, you know, view the full screen and the 6.9 inches is very cool. The sky is awesome. Nice building that you can work in. So it does use the full screen effectively. And you can see, you know, certain details. I took a picture of the ground I was walking on. So it's kind of like a bleached out, not very color heavy camera quality. But I mean, you be the judge of that. So, took a picture of when I was at the bowling alley. So, it's kind of very light. Everything's kind of washed out white, but it still functions. You can do an auto enhance. Oh, it's already auto enhanced. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what you're going to get when it comes to this uh, camera. Um, you know, you can do a selfie from the you know screen. That's the quality of it. And if you're viewing photos, like I mentioned, if you don't have the photos application on that little app selection on here, you can't view it. So let's just see if we can continue. 
Nope, can't even continue. Let's go ahead and add that app to my apps here. So you can scroll all the way down to photos. Oh wait, I already had it selected, right? I guess it doesn't exist. Interesting. Well, that's a flaw. All right, so, so let's see. Let's see what the video looks like. We go back to our photos. An example of the Bose earbuds open. This is me outdoors. Dealing with a lot of construction out there. Let me know what you think. Can you hear me? Do I sound good? Are these fire or what? So once again, it has a decent video camera system. It's a little washed out when it comes to, you know, the video quality is not very vivid, but it still works. It has a good sound to it. And that was a preview for my Bose uh, open earbuds that I'm going to review later on uh, so look out for that video but overall you know the camera quality if it's you can set up you know your phone to do kind of selfies you know this is more of a social media type you know selfie I want to take pictures with my friend while I'm partying you know kind of phone I mean you can just kind of pose it in different ways you can set it up on, you know, the perch to take a selfie if you want. I mean, that's not my personality. I like to take pictures and things like that with the best quality. But, I mean, this is pretty much all you're getting with this phone. So, if you're looking for the best camera, this is not it. But if you're looking for overall good phone, this is it. And if you're not on the wave of flip phones, uh... And yeah, this is definitely not going to be it for you. But let's just let's wrap this up after we talked about our camera quality. So overall, this is a pretty good phone. I think this is more of the flagship version that of the phones that Motorola wanted to come out with. They wanted to come out with a bang about four generations ago, back in 2020, to compete in the market. I think the price point of the thousand dollars was absolutely absurd. Uh, for this phone, I think the under 500, if you can get this under 500, which you can get on Amazon, eBay, um, or any other back market or any other type of, you know, Facebook marketplace, I think you should go ahead and grab it. If you just want like kind of a backup phone for your, you know, bigger, juicier, you know, Samsung S24 Ultra or your iPhone 15 Pro Max or something that has a little bit more weight to it. I think it's just a cool novelty phone. I think if you go into the public and you start whipping this out and flipping it up and down, I mean, you can, you know, really turn heads with this. So the software is great. It's utilizing Android to the best ability. I really enjoy Motorola software. I think their best phone, in my opinion, is a Motorola Edge Plus 2023. So I would be, you know, keen in buying that phone before I buy this phone. The battery life on this is, an, is uh, one of the cons that really just turned me off. I really wanted this to be a better battery four generations later, but I think they could be way better. I think it could last all day. I think it should be able to utilize the 68 watts so you know, wire charging like the other Motorola phones that they have, but I know there's sacrifices that have to be made uh, to make this phone even possible. But I do enjoy the fact that it has all a multitude of col colors, has four colors. And I love the back on it. You will have to get a case because this, I mean, this, everything is exposed. I feel, and I feel nervous when I'm walking out and I could potentially drop it, but it is so light that you, you know, forget it's not even there, but I like it a lot. I love the external display. I love how it has the fingerprint sensor on the side and on the screen and very thoughtful. I love this hinge. I don't think it will 
break anytime soon. But early on when I got the phone, it did have this kind of like weird cracking sound. But as I got used to it, it really wasn't a bother. But it does have a little bit of a sound and I'm worried that it might, you know, mess around and break one day. But I think they've tested it along the way and I think they know much better than I do how long this will last. But I think that could be worked on uh, to make it better. It'd be cool to have like a Motorola engraving here, kind of how Samsung does their hinge or some, sometimes they put their, you know, engraving somewhere on the hinge or something. I thought that'd be cool. But, you know, overall, I would give this like a eight out of 10. The battery life sucks. The fragility of this phone is in question. I don't know if I can get this wet at all because there's no IP rating. Uh, if, they, if there's an IP rating, if you can comment below and let me know. That'd be great, but um, you know, water repellent coating doesn't really say much to me. But for five hundred bucks, I think it's you know worth a shot. I do prefer you know the other Motorola phone, but this is a gorgeous phone. I'm not gonna lie, but there's a lot of gorgeous phones out there. So Motorola is trying to keep up with the best of them. Well, I appreciate you joining me today uh, to. Explore once again. This is the third Motorola phone that I thought I would never explore, but something told me to give it a try, and I'm glad I did because I was able to experience, you know, this external display, which is awesome. Experience the flipping motion, which you know creates a bigger, wider screen. But let me know what you think. Do you have the Motorola Razor 2023? Do you have any Motorola Razors in the past? that uh, you would like to share and comment below, please do below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. We are on our way, we're close to 200 subscribers. And we thank you for uh, watching, liking, and commenting on my videos. Um, for all in our video, we appreciate it. Once again, and thank you for joining Junior Tech Reviews. Have a good day. Peace.